Uh, welcome back. This is part two of the uh, power supply design series. Um, again, got no ease. Go back to the first video, watch that one. Um, got no ease behind my name. So all of this stuff, green salt. I know that this isn't a good idea. Let's get that out of the way. Um, so you remember this circuit from the first one. This is just our our version of a jelly bean um, linear regulator with jelly bean parts. Uh, we just made a simple linear regulator with a LM358 and an IRLZ 44N MOSFET. Um, yeah, so go back and watch the first one if you want to learn more about that. Uh, number two, we're going to make a tracking pre-regulator for this guy. Yes, we're going to put lipstick on that pig. Um, just because we want to, we want to learn something. What we're going to do here... Um, is we are going to basically use an LM2576 as our tracking pre-regulator. Um, this right here is the circuit for uh, the LM2576. Um, this is from the data sheet. Um, they give you how to find R1 and R2 here for this if you ever want to use this chip. Um, so we're going to basically just copy and paste this circuit right here. Um, I changed the MBR360. Um, we could come back to that. but Anyways, I have some issues with Ripple on this whole circuit. And I don't know. I think that might be part of it. This might be part of it. This might be part of it. I don't know. I didn't go through all these calculations. So I just pop more capacitance on it and call it a good... I'm a hobbyist, that's where we're at. I could go back through, I will go back through and calculate all this stuff later, but that's outside the scope for now. Um, but anyways, here's our circuit. Um, they do an example here, all that, whatnot, whatever. Look at the data sheet if you wanna use this. That's where you'll find this page. It is page 22. This one right here is the internal diagram of it. Um, I've already crossed out R1 and R2 because I have the adjustable version. R1 is open and R2 is zero ohms. So R1 is open and R2 is zero ohms. So it's basically just directly into the non-inverting um, the non-inverting input of this fixed gain error amp. <laughs> so yes, uh, so yeah, basically this 1.23 volts is standard for a lot of these type of um, these types of uh, uh, switching regulators. Um, so you'll see this a lot on on other videos about these things. Basically, I think what this guy is trying to do, it will do whatever in its power to switch this output to get the feedback to equal 1.23 because this is a comparator right here. Um, it'll kick on or off do whatever it needs to do to maintain 1.23 volts. So, with that in mind, we are going to stuff back in a voltage into this thing. That's where this circuit comes in. So this is the circuit. Um, you'll remember this part from here over is just this. See? Just an op amp into a MOSFET with a couple of feedback resistors and a little cap. MOS, uh, op amp, MOSFET, resistors, cap. But then we take off of here out of the output and we come back into um, a resistor. In this case, I just use a 22K. It's just kind of habit to have a current limiting resistor, although this is not necessary. Um, I'm gonna try my best to describe what I think is going on with this circuit, but uh, just start off again. Remember, this circuit right here so this circuit right here is just this portion from basically here over. Um, so basically to the capacitor, to the capacitor, everything is pretty much exactly the same. Um, I just copied and pasted it. I'll go through later, maybe try and get some of these calculations for a little bit better ripple um, response. But um, So yeah, all the magic is happening right here. So I'm going to just kind of draw that a little bit better here. Well, not better, but different. Should 
be. Okay. So then I'm going to label these one, two, and three. So remember this feedback. This feedback is going to do everything. It's, it's this chip over here is able to influence this point right here so that this feedback is equal to 1.23 volts. Remember that. And if this feedback is lower, this will be higher. If this feedback is higher, this will be lower. So then this goes off, does its thing. This comes back as, so here we have 10K, here we have 10K. Then it comes back as a feedback. So again, what I think is happening here is that when this point goes low, because remember this is a PNP uh, transistor. This is the BC327-40. It's just what I had in my kit. I think it could be pretty much any PNP transistor. Don't quote me on that. I don't know. I got no ease, man. Um, this is a terribly drawn picture, but whatever. As this point goes lower, I think that then current can flow this way, which would allow current to flow this way and this way. Because if you remember, one, two, three, I1 minus I2 is equal to I3. That should be the current the uh, the calculations of a PNP BJT. So I3 will equal across 10K, because remember this feedback? Gotta remember this feedback right here goes into an op amp. And that op amp is, remember the rules of an op amp, no current flows in or out of an op amp uh, input. Um, Again, go back, watch Dave Jones' videos about that, but that's one of the rules. So, one of the rules of an op amp, no current flows in. So no current should be flowing into or out of that feedback pin. So that means no current's going this way. It's all going through this 10K resistor. So we know that this node right here is gonna be maintained at 1.23 volts, which is 1.23 microamps or something like that, I think. Um, so again, V equals I R. This is how I always remember. This is where I don't understand, <laughs> right? Because this current is gonna be almost exactly the same every time I measure this. There's really no current flowing out of this. Um, so yeah, I would say that as, I don't know, we'll just discard this. I really don't know. If you understand this better than I do, please describe it down below because I would I really want to understand it better, but I think as this node goes down, because this is down, right? If this goes down, then the voltage across this resistor or the wire should go down. Just go down, this is high. So then this would go up. I2 goes up which means that I3 goes down, which means that this goes down, which means that this goes down. I don't know, it's something like that. I think, I think that's what it is. And then as this goes up, that means that I2 goes down, which means that I3 goes down, or which means this goes down, which means I3 goes up, and then this voltage goes up. <laughs> Meaning, <laughs> this goes down. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if you know how this works, please. I, I'm begging you, man. We got to know. Um, I did build this up, though. So uh, let's go ahead and test it. <laughs> All right, here I got the circuit. Um, so everything from this side over is like what we were talking about right here. This feedback. And then everything this side over is what we already did. So here we go, let's test it. All right, so right now we're both set up the same. Uh, we're putting out 2.8 volts on the output of the switching regulator 
and we are putting out 40 millivolts on our um, linear regulator, the output of the circuit. So we're going to go ahead and just raise that up a little bit. And so we're 1.44 and 3.28 and see how the blue just tracks the yellow. All the way up off the screen because I only have 20 volts capable there. See how it slowly kind of comes down? That's much better once you have a load on it. Uh, let's put a load on it though and I'll show you the problem that I'm having. So you can see when we turn on the load and then we crank it up, we're at 100, or about 200 milliamps right there. And then it follows itself. But do you see how gnarly that is? <laughs> Ugh. Still follows it, but now it follows it a lot closer. Um, and then as we put more load, I actually haven't tried this. As we put more load, that's 600 milliamps. Full amp about, there's an amp. We're still, our voltage is pretty steady, it's just as far as the average value of it goes, it's nice and steady. Um, these things track really well. Um, but as I come down, you turn it off and then it gets real nice. Turn it on, it gets gnarly. Turn it off. I don't know. I have tried upping the capacitance here. I've tried upping the capacitance all the way around the tracking regulator. Um, I tried adding capacitance to uh, the feedback loop. I tried making an RC filter out of this. Nothing, man. Nothing. It did not want to function. So, I, I don't know. Maybe I could try... I don't know. The problem is, is that whenever I have this, even the input side is super filthy. Like, um... Yeah, so I'll keep trying some stuff, but for now, the tracking regulator part of it kind of works. Um, now I got no load, so it just jumps down there. It just looks gnarly, you know what I mean? Like, earlier when I measured it, I was measuring about a volt, peak to peak, uh, of ripple there. And it's about 60 kilohertz, so if anybody in the know has any ideas on how to get rid of that, let me know. Thanks, uh, yeah, we'll see you next so time. I changed my uh, 5 volt rail to the Scopes USB, and it goes through this whole mess here. Yeah, I know, it's a mess. But it looks a lot smoother. Um, drawing half an amp, there's zero. Yeah, we were hitting there pretty good there, so it doesn't surprise me there. You know, still moves with it. But I'm gonna guess again that that is the 5 volt rail that is messing us up because that's amplified all the way across the whole system. That's my best guess. I don't know. Let's just see here. Our full range of current, it stays fairly stable. Okay. But yeah. Here we go. That's what I found. Still tracks itself pretty good, so now I'm happy with it. Um, but now this MOSFET is way cooler when we draw higher currents. I'm not going to do it right now. I uh, still testing, and this is still a mess. <laughs> so cool. Thanks. I'll catch you next time.